And he brings the time to almost 12 minutes to 8. Can I just remind you, you're listening to BBC Radio Manchester's up and about. Me, Peter Wheeler. Now, let me say this word to you, ways goose. There. It probably won't mean a thing to you, and it won't enlighten you if I tell you that since today is Maundy Thursday, it's traditionally ways goose. To an exclusive fraternity of newspaper men, ways goose is possibly the most important day of the year. Tradition has it that no papers are printed tonight, so the newspaper industry en masse takes Maundy Thursday off and has a huge party. But this year, thanks to one Eddie Shah, there'll be no ways goose and no party. The word was first used in 1731 in relation to a workers' holiday. And Liz McCallum explains how 250 years of tradition has been wiped out overnight by new technology. Maundy Thursday traditionally is the one day in the year when newspaper folk turn in punctually. An early champagne breakfast begins a day of unbridled debauchery. But today, for the first Maundy Thursday on record, they'll creep unwillingly behind their desks as on any other day of the year. If Eddie Shah could slip any further in the popularity stakes, he'd be plummeting right now. For the man who dispensed with old technology clearly has little respect for old traditions. Tonight is new National Daily. Today will print as normal. So all the other nationals will as well. Ways Goose, like hot metal, is suddenly a thing of the past. George Harrop, 65-year-old former picture editor on The Mirror, is a veteran of Ways Goose events, a tradition which consists of a dinner and a trip to the countryside. With a sort of uh, controlled turbulence and plenty of drink. And there were various groups went, the fishermen and the, the golfers. We were more or less social commandos, hostelries on the way. And we used to start at about the coach, about 10.15, and we met in the pub about 6 or 7 in the morning or half past 8. You'll never experience the thrill of being served by a lady licensee in a baby doll nightdress. And uh, then we went on on the coach and we had beer and poker schools and then we went for lunch. There was once on the express, I believe, at the, I wouldn't name the place, one reveller in his enthusiasm hurled some hot pot at the wall, which was white pebble decoration. And of course they were barred for life. But on reflection, I understand the man said, it's rather having out this and it looked beautiful. So they kept the decor and it was actually congealed hot pot. On a, so the idea was to be very badly behaved in that case? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we did that without trying. Uh, not really. It was just the fact that we're all together at the one time in the year. How many people would be on these trips? Oh, well, many hundreds. Uh, there was usually about 30 or 40 of us. Uh, when we set out, we didn't always come back with that number, but uh, left at Blackpool. I remember one year at Blackpool, and the one fellow with a busted nose and bandage on his head and I looked at the sand and the sea and I thought, God, it's Dunkirk again. Did you warn the towns where you were going to be going? Good heavens, no, we'd have never got there. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I think it was Bakewell, and one of the inhabitants thought there had been a delayed landing by the Germans, I understand. Of course, you had to go back to work again the next day on Good Friday, probably with pretty rotten heads, I would think. Well, we did have guide dogs and white sticks and things and uh, helped in by... Boy Scouts. Uh, yes, but journalists are resilient people. But Ways Goose dies hard. The deskbound employees of the Daily Mail are planning to smuggle in hampers today. And a select group of workers whose day off happens to fall on this Maundy Thursday will hold a Ways Goose party anyway. Their numbers sadly depleted to 14. And as they head off to Blackpool for a game of golf, George Harrop will be with them in spirit. Well, I'm having a drink, certainly. And I shall probably phone a couple of colleagues and commiserate with them. My colleagues always said to me, of course, George, every day is Monday, Thursday to you. Liz McCallum reporting on the tradition of Ways Goose, the printer's holiday. There, were, there used to be a great tradition of uh, celebrating the Ways Goose in Sheffield, and when I worked on the Sheffield Telegraph, mm. all the reporters and printers used to get together and go off to a pub in the city, and I remember one year... The news editor drank so much that uh, he, he could barely stand up. We poured him onto the last train, which was from Sheffield to Rotherham, which <laughs> is about five minutes. He fell asleep and ended up in Hull. 
<laughs> and had to pay about fifty pounds to get a taxi back. <laughs> great stuff! I'd never heard of Ways Goose. Isn't that a great gap in my my knowledge? Well, I hadn't until I sort of mm. joined joined a newspaper. It's um, very sort of very much exclusive to the newspaper industry, I think. And there are very few papers that still celebrate it. Yes. It's very much a printing holiday, and the journalists, I think, tag along. I think we should reinstate it here at the BBC. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> BBC Ways Goose. <laughs> the time now is uh, just coming up to seven minutes to eight. <laughs>